Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I am Carrie with Nashville Strength Company. Today I have Dr. Scott Dunaway from Cairo Strength and he is going to lead us today. All right, Carrie, so we're gonna go through a little restorative routine uh, for the knees. Um, and it's important to understand that the knee is kind of at the whim of the foot and the hip. So um, to, just for time purposes, we're gonna go over some mobility stuff for the foot. Um, the kind of key players there that usually limit um, how the knee's functioning. And then we'll also kind of go into some isometrics for the knee to start to learn how to build some strength around your end ranges. Um, and then um, talk a little bit about how to implement that into different movement patterns. So, um, Karen, I'm gonna have you start off on the ground here for me. So, when we, start, when we talk about the feet, um, the biggest thing we need to look at first is this big toe extension. So you can see Carrie right now as she's kneeling down, um, those toes are about 90 degrees of flexion right there. Ideally, if you're just standing here, you can get about 60 degrees of big toe extension. And the importance of this, now Carrie, um, if you were to have more stiffness in those feet, what I would do is I have you on hands and knees. Um, and what I'm gonna do is put your toes in the ground like this and just slowly rock back. And so what you'll do is just get about 10 rocks like that. Now the importance of this is if I'm walking and I don't have big toe extension, I can't push off the toe like this. So I end up having to toe out, and then as I push off, now I'm getting this kind of internal rotation of my knee right here, and that's gonna be really hard to get out of any discomfort or to uh, uh, really make any progress with your knee uh, training. So um, we're gonna go from this carry, and now we're gonna put the uh, top of the feet down in the ground, and again, we're gonna do a little rocking. So now we're work working at extending the, the ankle here, getting good uh, uh, plantar flexion here uh, to loosen up the front of the ankles and, and the uh, uh, shins. Now, often people will have limited range of motion here um, in the ankle. So if you need to, you might be able to get a little towel or uh, something there you can kind of support to get a, a good comfortable stretch in there. We're, we're really talking about expanding a comfort zone here instead of pushing your limits. And the same thing applies to if you don't have that range of motion in the knees, you might have to put something between uh, the glutes and, and the heels to where you can get down into this stretch comfortably um, and start to expand your comfort zone. Getting full range of this, so Karen, I'm gonna have you sit down in your heels now. Getting full range with the top of your heels into the ground, butt into heels like this, um, that might take weeks for some people, it might take months for other people. The idea is to get uh, gradually increasing that stretch until you feel like you can get down there comfortably. So Carrie, was that comfortable for you? Yes. Okay, so th those are the basics right there of, of the feet, and now we're gonna get you in a seated position. And now we're gonna take Carrie through uh, isometric contraction of in range uh, without it being loaded. So I'm gonna have you kind of bring your knee up, and let's pretend like, uh, just go ahead and go as far as you can with that knee flexion. So Carrie has pretty good knee flexion there. Let's say you got caught about right here, right? And there was either pain or just straight limitation. Now Carrie, in this position, I'm gonna have you slowly slide this foot back behind your ankle right here, right? So now she's got, um, she's gonna do some isometrics by trying to extend her leg out and pull her leg past her shin like she's doing a, a hamstring curl. So we're in in range flexion. Carrie, I'm gonna have you slowly kind of kick out like you're trying to extend the knee. And this hand right here is stopping this. So you're gonna do about 10 seconds, nice controlled contraction, about 80% of what you can really do. Make sure you're breathing through it. And then slowly, after that 10 second contraction, you're gonna kinda of pull your heel into your shin as if you're trying to pull the heel to the butt. Now again, about 80% of what you can do. Try, carry sitting up nice and tall like this. Make sure when you're doing this, we don't have this kind of flex position like this, okay? So nice and tall, and then you're gonna go back and forth with those. About. Uh, six reps six reps each which ends up being about a minute worth of extension and a minute worth of uh, flexion in the knee okay so that's end range flexion each time you do flexion so let's say we're, we're coming into the, the we're pushing into the shin right here each time you do another rep try to just get another degree or two of flexion you should be able to eat a little bit more range of motion there um, and just be careful I usually say don't just go from zero to 80 right away as you're doing about that 10 second hold, slowly, gradually increase that range or increase that pressure as you're doing that, okay? So now, let's talk about end range extension. Um, if she was to, if Carrie was to extend her legs all the way out, so put your legs out in front of you. Um, and we're gonna do the one close to the camera here. So if you extend this leg all the way, this heel will pop up off the ground if you got good terminal knee extension. And it's just, uh, just enough to kind of slide your hands under. Um, and then, so that's gonna be good terminal end range. If you are extended, um, and this is your end range of motion right here, and you've got some space between the uh, floor and the knee, what I'll do is I'll have a yoga block here, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to slowly eat some range into this um, extension right here. So Carrie, what I'll 
have you do. You got good extension, so they wouldn't be as important for you. But again, with the idea of trying to restore as much mobility first or, or range of motion first before we start uh, strengthening this, what we're gonna do is kind of give a little pressure with the hand here. Um, and then as you're putting a little pressure here, you're gonna push through your heel here. Again, slow, good contractions um, for about 10 seconds and then coming out of it. So you slow, increase the pressure, increase the pressure, and then come out of it. And eventually with each time you do this, you should be able to get that knee a little bit further, a little bit further into extension to where when you come off that now, you should have full, full knee extension right there. Um, and then when you get to this point, you're good to go. Um, and then we can move to the next step, which is gonna be up on your feet, pushing the wall, doing some isometric contractions. So, Carrie, what we'll have you do first. We're gonna do, all of these are not gonna be locked knees. They're all gonna kinda be loose knees, okay? So we wanna have a little bend because we wanna be able to challenge these ligaments that are geared towards uh, stabilizing that side-to-side -side movement. Um, so let's do face me first. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be nice and tall, um, get a nice, good, engaged core right here so we don't wanna be flexed over as we're doing this. Nice, good engagement here. And what you're gonna do is slowly kinda push the heel with a little bit of bend in the knee. We're gonna bend this down just a little bit. Good. Just a slight bend in that knee right there. And what I want you to think about doing is slowly pressing in. Take a good breath in. As you exhale, push into the wall, push into the wall, push into the wall, push into the wall. Good. So you're gonna do three reps of that. And now what we're doing here is trying to make sure we stay engaged as she presses. She's pushing through the wall this way with a slight kind of intention of doing a hamstring curl as well. So most of your pressure is going straight through, but you have a little bit of intention coming this way. All right, so it's gonna be three reps of that. Now we're gonna turn this way. And what she's gonna do um, with this one here and then with all these, if you need some stability, you might need a broomstick here. We have this balance bar, so we're gonna use this. But now what we're gonna do again, a little bit of bend in the knee. We're gonna kind of push the entire side of the leg into the wall here. And the same thing applies. Nice, good, upright. Nice, good, engaged core. Breathe in. As you exhale, we're kind of pressing in this way with a slight intention of coming up. The, the reason it's called isometric is we're not moving through any range of motion. It's just the intention of coming up in this position because we'll start adding range of motion to this. All right? So now we got this adduction or abduction, sorry, um, isometric as well. So now what uh, Carrie's going to do, she's going to face the wall. And now what you're going to do is you're going to get a little dorsiflexion. And what you're going to do is, again, on the exhale, press through the wall with a slight intention of coming up. And that's going to be another good um, isometric kind of trying to get that uh, quad activated. Now, if you have an issue with that being uncomfortable on the, on the toes or anything like that, we can put a yoga block right here and you can kind of push in this way and then come up and if, if the uh, toes are uncomfortable on the wall. So uh, we just did three reps of that. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little movement to this. So I'm gonna have you face me again. And what you're gonna do, we're gonna put this back between your heels so then you can slide that up the wall there. So now she's gonna start with that same type of exhale and press into the wall. But now as she's exhaling, she's gonna really pull up and get a nice good isometric contraction, trying to get at least to that 90 degrees. And then as she presses it back down, it's gonna be a nice good contraction back down. Kind of regain, regain your breath. Exhale and start to pull up. Nice, good engagement. We don't want the torso moving around too much. And then slowly press down again. Good, so three reps of that. Now let's go ahead and face this way. Now this is gonna be an active hip flexion as she's pressing into the wall. So the same thing applies. Good inhale, as you exhale, you're pressing in, coming up and going back down. Now just a kind of point to notice here, um, we're kind of off the wall here because of this balance beam. If you could, I would suggest trying to get that hip a little closer so you have a little abduction, but the entire shin and the entire leg should kind of be gliding that wall, not too much of, of, of the knee away from the wall. But uh, So that's three reps of that. Nice, good, slow movement coming back down. Now the last one, again, if the toes are, uh, if there's a discomfort with the toes here, um, let me get this down here, right there, perfect. So start with a little bit of the knee, on the exhale, nice and engaged, you're gonna press in, and as you press in, you're gonna come up. Um, sometimes might help on this one specifically if you have shoes on. Um, I wanted to show the foot mobility stuff without the shoes, but um, what we're gonna do is again, good slow ranges, probably looking at three seconds up, three seconds down, and just being active that whole process. So that's gonna be a couple of good drills, at least to start getting some good activity around the knee to support the knee. Um, and then from there, what we're gonna be looking at is trying to integrate that into some lunging, your squatting, or your hinging patterns, um, 
even, even things as simple as calf raises to make sure the foot and ankle stay nice and stable underneath the knee. Um, because that knee pretty much just does this, a little bit of twisting. There's a lot of stuff going on with the foot, a lot of stuff going on with the hip. So um, while this will prime the knee to function within the context of good movement, there's always the next step. So um, this is a great way to get started with your knee rehab or your knee um, uh, restorative plan. Um, but yeah, so that, that's, that'd be a good 15, 10 minute, how long was that, 10, 15 minutes? Something like Something that. Something like that, yeah. So that's a, a good little quick way to get that started. Okay, and who are you? Where can we follow uh, you at? Yes, so my name is uh, Dr. Dunaway with Cairo Strength. Um, I put out a newsletter every week. You can sign up for that newsletter on www.cairostrength.com. Find me on Instagram, or you can find me on Facebook, all of those at Cairo Strength. Great, and once again, I am Carrie. I am on Instagram as essentially underscore fit. You can get the gym at Nashville Strength Company, and our website is nashvillestrength.nashvillestrengthcompany.co. All right, thank you for joining us.